Hello everyone, welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol Battle Report complete with new tree scenery that is pretty neat, not going to take any credit for this at all I did not make them but they are awesome they're also removable so they're going to count as size 3 throwables because they are very large trees um, having this many of them probably imbalances throwing a little bit this match but it seemed fun usually you wouldn't have this much scenery but hey it's it's just for fun so just to show off the new stuff anyway today for you we have two new affiliations we have the web warriors and the spider foes going up against each other so without further ado let's jump in take a look at the teams and get started so here are our web warriors being led by miles morales because spider-man was in the core box so he doesn't get to be the leader even though he should be but miles is fine so Miles is the affiliation leader, we have Ghost Spider and Gwen Stacy, we have Peter Parker, Spider-Man, we have Venom. Venom's interesting because he can be in either Web Warriors or spider Foes, which is fun. And then Captain Marvel just to make up the threat value, which I totally forgot to mention, which is 18 threat. Random aside, if you ignore Captain Marvel and just have these four, this is the exact squad I used to play through Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 on the Switch. N not interesting at all I imagine, just a, a random fact, that's the team I used and they were very effective. But anyway, Captain Marvel is also there, Team Tactics cards, Lethal Protector, Uneasy Allies, Disarm, Web Barrier, which is a new one with a very confusing text, good luck with that, and all webbed up. So here is our spider foes, although I forgot to mention what the Web Warrior affiliation bonus is, if you didn't watch the unboxing, it's called With Great Power or something like that, or Great Responsibility. It allows each member to have one reroll, and also if they're holding or contesting an objective, they can modify and reroll skull results, which normally you are not allowed to do. Anyway, for the Web Warriors, uh, sorry, for the Spider Force rather, we have Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. He is leading the team. We have Doc Ock, who is also part of the roster. Now, to make it, the Spider Force affiliation had to bring Winter Soldier because Venom is moonlighting. He's a good guy today. So un until uh, Kingpin is out in, ooh, it's Kingpin. Kingpin is like October-ish, I think. He's part of this setup as well, so then you could have it legitimately without needing Venom. Anyway, we also have Modok and Crossbones and Medpack, Psychic Fortress, All You've Got, Well Laid Plans, and Blind Obsession, which has wonderful card art. Here's our two missions being played, although the Spider Foes Affiliation Bonus, which I forgot to mention as well, is that at the cost of one power you can modify an opponent's defense dice at the final step of the check, I believe it is. So after any uh, re-rolls and whatnot, you can force a, a re-roll on a successful die at the cost of one power. So if you're bleeding all your power into objectives, which might be happening today because, oh no, look what happened. Skulls infiltrate, scrolls, sorry, infiltrate world leadership, so it's the three rubble piles, you've got to find the power core, hold on to the power core, if you have the power core, you get two victory points. Now, the other one, which is the threat value being played today, Portals Overrun City with Spider People, this is the new crisis that came with the Miles and Gwen box. So it's very, very similar to the Origin Bombs, except there is four of them, not three. You have to do the exact same type of check to take control of it if, however, you roll a skull in your check roll, whether successful or not, rather than take damage like with the origin bombs, you are placed by your opponent within two of your current position. So they're kind of, the, tel the portals are teleporting you around. So anyway, we'll get both teams deployed and then I'll show you specifically where all the objectives on the map are. So both sides are set up and ready to go. Will it be the spider foes going first who are on the far end of the table? The web warriors are here, so there's Venom. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Ghost Spider, Captain Marvel, and there is the portal closest to them. Now, the Kree power cores are the three rubble piles along the center. Um, the portals are meant to be on the exact same thing, so it's actually the central point that should be counting. It's just for ease of showing where they are, they're currently separated. That won't be a problem once the Kree rubble piles are removed. Because, notoriously on this channel, the power core is found instantly. So there's the other one over there. And then for the spider foes, they have a portal right in front of them. They also have a bunch of big bases so they can squeeze themselves out of the tier 3 range. Or the range 3, I mean. Winter Soldier, Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Modok, And going shopping in the, the gun shop is Crossbones on the end there. So, with that all set up, let's get started with Battle Round 1 Power Phase. So with the power dished out, Green Goblin was the first activation of the game. He moves medium and he did so like one and a half-ish to be within one of the rubble here to search for the Kree power core. He expended power, you roll two dice if one of them is a crit, which is a one in eight chance. You find power core. Did he? He did not. That which is totally unheard of on this channel. Usually the first search is always successful. 
So Captain Marvel was the first activation for the Web Warriors and did pretty much the same thing, double medium move, to get within more than one of the rubble pile there, expended a power to search for the power core and did not find it. The Winter Soldier was up next and he just moved one uh, medium move for his first action, also this has been knocked off centre slightly, and then he shot his assault rifle at Captain Marvel. She had automatic cover because of the obscuring there, but it didn't matter because her defence dice were more than enough to defend the damage he did. Peter Parker Spider-Man was up next and he web swung through the trees here. One long movement was not enough to get within one of the power core, or sorry, the rubble, so he had to use both actions for that. He expended his power to search the rubble and did not find the core. Uh, the, the portals are going to get ignored. <laughs> Anyway, this also means that on Norman's next turn, his obsession with Spider-Man will kick in because Spider-Man, Peter Parker, is within three and his insanity takes the form of forcing his first action to be an attack on Spider-Man. So if you have Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Miles Morales isn't affected or doesn't affect Green Goblin in the same way, you can kind of corral him in certain directions, which is a very interesting thing. But also, Green Goblin is kind of deadly, so not necessarily a good thing. Doc Ock activated and moved twice just to reposition himself on the far side of the closest spider portal. He expended his power to try and take control of it and he succeeded with no skulls. Um, the web, sorry, the spider foes don't come with any like affiliation symbols, so just going to use the Hydra ones for, you know, illustrating evil. So also, I forgot to mention in the setup, but the spider portals do not work like the origin bombs in the sense that victory points are only given out to who holds majority. It's one or two victory points per portal held. I think it's one victory point per portal. So it's not a majority. So just because they have that one doesn't necessarily mean that if the web warriors go on to get two, they get nothing. Venom activated and moved small twice for his activation. He expended one power to search the rubble and he found the power core. So Venom now has a nice big target on his head, he's carrying that on his person and that'll be two victory points for him, well for his team I guess, at the end of every turn in which he's holding it. But yeah, he didn't check the portal so no one's claiming that, and it also does mean that rubble pile is gone so the middle of the map is now irrelevant, and the one over there is gone so the portal has been moved to where it should correctly be, because remember they should have been overlapping with each other. So yeah, over to either Modoc or Crossbones. Crossbones went for his jauntiest stroll as his small movement allows, so he moved once to roughly there, and then once to roughly there. He is in range to attack Venom, but obviously he's used his two actions, so now he can't, and he isn't close enough to try and claim that spider portal there. Gwen Stacy goes spider activate. She moves along, so she did so to get all the way over here with Captain Marvel. She expended one power to secure the spider person portal there and succeeded. So that is one portal each. Now it's over to Modoc to end the first turn for the Cabal. Sorry, they're not Cabal. They are Spider Foes. They could have been Cabal, though, couldn't they? If um, Winter Soldier had just a pledge, pledged allegiance to that affiliation instead. But whatever. Anyway, and then I'll be back over to Miles to end the turn proper. So Modoc had a busy turn. He moved forwards small as best he could. Then he did his mental attack, his mystic attack, whatever it's called. Uh, psionic bomb or something on Venom did really well did four damage Venom then expended power to counter attack with so many snacks and just did a basic attack which did two damage to Modoc, which in turn gave him enough power to use his superpower or imbecile all the worlds or all whatever the weapon of the world is a weapon to Modoc. his attacks are confusing anyway he picked up the car that was behind him hocked it at Venom Venom did okay with his dog, but did take one additional damage, so he's at 5 out of 7 damage as we go over to Miles to end the turn. So Miles activated and moved so he was just within one on that side of the portal, he expended his power to take control of it, and dead however his role also included a skull, so he was moved to the, the range to by the opposition, which then popped him back on here, so his other action was to move medium again, Put him where you can see him. He wasn't going to attack anyway, but yeah, he is only medium movement, unlike Gwen and Peter. So, couldn't get up that far. Anyway, we are into the cleanup and scoring for Battle Round 1. So, Venom, of course, is holding the Kree Power Core, and that awards two victory points, although he is hurting thanks to Modoc doing a lot of damage. Not likely he's going to be holding on to it next turn because the Web, not Web Warriors, Spider Foes, new names, Spider Foes will be getting first activation again. Um, the Web Warriors do however hold two of the four portals, boom boom, for two more victory points, putting them at four, and only one portal is being held by the Green Goblins team, meaning they're on the scoreboard, but only one, so four plays one as we win battle round two with the spider Foes going first. 
So Modok got Battle Round 2 started, he stayed where he was and did two psionic blasts on Venom because the first one only did one, the second one actually did three, totally forgot to get the extra damage here but he only had one health left so that's why that was there to remind how much power Modok generated. So Venom did get dazed, just want to point out the free reroll from the Web Warrior affiliation was remembered, however the being allowed to modify and reroll skulls when contesting or holding an objective was forgotten and because the dice rolls aren't on film can't check whether that would have made a difference. Totally forgot, we'll try and remember going forward. Either way, Venom did drop the core, but Modok is out of range 2, which is, you have to place it within range 2, so he can't get it. So it's been placed right in front of Crossbones, but there is a potential chance for a steal to get it back. But yeah, Venom will not be getting a turn, um, and this portal is still unclaimed. So Miles activated and he did a move and a half to get within one to spend power to pick up the dropped core that Venom dropped in order to snatch it up before Crossbones could grab it. It does expose him to attacks. Couldn't move with Spider-Man because Spider-Man's going to stay where he is to force Green Goblin to waste an attack on him, meaning at best he might be able to hit Miles, although he'd have to be within three because Miles has stealth. Um, so he might not be able to. So it's trying to reduce the damage potential to him, uh, making good use of his stealth, but he, he really needs to run away after this. So Crossbones activated next and he went after Miles with an overpower for 3 power, 2 power, whatever it costs, which got a wild so it includes a throw before the attack is resolved and then after attack is completed he can move within 1. So he chucked Miles further into danger, putting him within danger zone of these two, in other words he's within 3 so they can see him. Then uh, he moved within 1 afterwards. So the overpower did 2, then for his other basic action he tried to just do a standard free strike and that was not able to get through his defence and this time yes, the free reroll and being able to modify skulls because Miles is holding an objective was remembered and it did help. Spider-Man, as in Peter Parker, gotta start making that distinction every time, was up next and despite not moving he had a pretty eventful turn so he did a basic strike on Green Goblin the first one did zero damage, then he did another and it did much better, he did three damage. That generated him enough power so that he could do web of pulp, so he picked up the card that was behind Green Goblin, pulled it into the back of his head, he did okay with his dodge roll though, so he only took one damage from that, but all said and done that's four damage out of the seven? Seven and I think he has seven on his healthy side. Um, so yeah, not too bad. He couldn't throw Green Goblin because it's size two or less interactive terrain or character for web of pulp and uh, Green Goblin is size 3 on his glider. Doc Ock activated and from where he was standing because he's within 3 he just did 2 basic strikes on Miles and whiffed with both of them. The affiliation bonus for the Web Warriors did help and uh, reeling skulls for holding objective did as well. The reason that was done, in case you are curious, is because if Doc Ock was able to generate 2 power on himself in some fashion, i.e. a basic strike, he and Green Goblin could have used the Well Laid Plans Tactics card, which even if it didn't kill Miles, would have made him drop an objective with a pretty high probability because it just needs to do one damage, which is a crit or a wild on five dice. So, and it makes you drop objectives. So that was almost nasty, but Miles is still standing. Captain Marvel moved up medium and then fired an energy blast at Green Goblin managed to hit him for 2 damage, so he is now on 1 HP remaining on his healthy side, although he starts going a little mad on his flipped over side, so I'm not sure that's entirely a good thing, but he's hurting, so it is over to him or Winter Soldier for the spider foes next. So Green Goblin activated, and because his arch nemesis was within 3, his first action had to be an attack action on Spider-Man, he did so, it only did 1 damage, however a wild was selected, or obtained, so he got to pick between some status effects and inflict poison. Then he did a hit and run, which is also counting as an action, but it's a move or an attack and a move as one action. So he did another basic attack, this time it did two damage, and he did the new status effect incinerate, which means Pierre cannot generate power from being hurt by enemies until the incinerate is cured, and then he did a medium move in that direction. So he didn't go after Miles directly, he had to focus on his arch nemesis. Uh, what he could have done instead after the basic attack was do a bag of tricks on Miles, uh, but it was not noticed until it was too late that hit and run is an action counting superpower, but oh well. So it's over to Gwen to end the turn for Web Warriors. So Gwen moved ever so slightly, not her full long, just so she was within range to use impact webbing on Winter Soldier to try and get the wild on to push him further away from any potential objective stealing and didn't get the wild. Also didn't do any damage because of his defense rolls. So it is over to the Winter Soldier to end off Battle Round 2. 
So when our soldier double moved, spent power to convert that portal and succeeded. However, the roll did also have a skull, so he was moved range two away, and that's why he's ended up there. But he did successfully turn a portal, and that takes us to his scoring. So despite some bad odds, Miles is holding on to the creep power core after Venom dropped it. So that is two more victory points, and the Web Warriors also only hold one portal now for three total gained in this round. The Spider Foes, however, they now own two portals, the one at the back there, one there. The one by Venom is still unclaimed by either side, bringing them two more victory points. So as we go into battle round three with the Web Warriors going first, seven plays three in the Web Warriors' favour. So to get battle round three started, Miles activated and he did a web swing for three power, which is a within three move. So he went over here to the far side of Goblin. It also improves his next basic attack, which is a web line kick by adding two dice to it, turning it from a four physical to a six. He did that on Green Goblin, who has four defense dice. One damage got through, which was exactly enough to daze him. He then, for a second action, because web line was a superpower once per turn, he did a move to guard this portal and also to get out of dodge with the Kree power core. Modok was first up for the spider foes, he did a double short move to put himself there. He then did imbecile all the world as a weapon to Modok, remember what it was called that time, on Venom to chuck him long into the tree so he takes one damage from the impact. But then he spent power, one power, to try and convert this portal. Not only did he fail to convert it but there's a skull in the roll so he got teleported too so now he's stuck up there in the building and he'd have to move back to try again. Carol Danvers activated, she moved over to here and then did a basic strike on uh, the Winter Soldier for 4 damage, did very well. Also spent a power to convert the portal and succeeded. And then finally, because of the power generated from that basic strike doing damage, she picked up the telephone booth that was next to her, chucked it at the Winter Soldier, his dodge was a 0, so he took 2 full damage from it because it was 1 plus 1, because it was small, but he only had 1 health left anyway, so he is dazed and will not be getting a turn. Crossbones activated and double moved in order to try and take this portal for one power and he did. He only rolls two energy dice so he got one success which is enough because there's no allies or no enemies around and one skull so he got teleported to, to the other side of that bin after succeeding but he did convert the portal. Spider-Man activated, Peter Parker I mean to be specific. He shook his poison for his first action then he did a move so he's staying incinerated so he's just a little bit on fire you know just a little bit. To where you can see him, then he spent the power to do a web bolt, picked up Doc Ock, threw him over his head into the Captain America statue for one damage. And that is it. So yes, he is still a little bit on fire, but he's not poisoned. So Doc Ock is actually the last activation for the spider foes this turn because everyone was getting knocked out, which does mean Gwen and Venom get to just have their turns after this. Doc Ock did arm lasers on Spider-Man, did two damage, and has dazed him. I feel a sneeze brewing, so I'm talking quickly. Then he moved just to guard this for his other action, and that is it. So to cover the last two activations, Venom went first, he moved next to the portal, he did a Clintar Rage to pick up the bin and chuck it at Crossbones, Crossbones has four defense dice for physical, he easily dodged, he then spent all his power, or except one, which was used to convert the portal, on a We Are Venom, seven physical, did one damage, <clears throat> so not very great. Over here, Gwen double moved, tried to convert the portal, Skull Skull Blank, she got teleported to, and it stayed under the Spider Foes control. And with that, we're into cleanup and scoring. So the Web Warriors are pulling away with it a bit here because they have three out of the four portals for three victory points. The uh, Spider Foes obviously have one for one victory point, and Miles over here is still holding on to the Kree Power Core. So as we go into battle round four with uh, the Spider Foes going first, it is 12 playing four. The Green Goblin activated and for his first move, or for his first action, sorry, it was a move to get into Miles' face, not quite as where you see him now, but it was slightly less. Then he did a Knight of the Goblins, 7 energy for 3 power. It also does incinerate and poison, which it did, and 2 damage to him. Didn't kill him though, so he had to spend 3 more power on Glider Ram, which replaces hit and run when Norman is on his wounded side. Slams into him, size 4. Managed to dodge two of damage, but took two more, so these stats effects are irrelevant because Miles is dazed and he has dropped the objective. Now, Green Goblin has no power left, so he can't pick up the Kree power core and he can't try and convert the portal. So the power core has been dropped where Winter Soldier can reach it with a double move, but Captain Marvel cannot. Nobody expects the Spanish Venom. He did a double small move 
and got just within one. So he spent the one power he had from the power phase to pick up the Kree core. It has come home to where it started. Venom is holding it. Uh, he won't necessarily be holding it for the entire turn, but let's see. Modok activated, but he couldn't get close enough to manipulate Venom to move him into danger. So he just moved. He spent power to convert the portal when he's staying there to obstruct it, so that's now controlled by the spider foes, but he couldn't get to Venom. It's looking like this might be over. Captain Marvel activated and did a rocket punch on the Winter Soldier and missed entirely. It was a pathetic roll. She then just did a basic strike and it did one damage. I think Winter Soldier's sitting on 10 power now, so it's over to either him, Doc Ock, or Crossbones. So Winter Soldier double moved to get over here. He tried to convert the portal because he couldn't attack and he failed. Uh, worth pointing out he had to surpass one success on his three energy defense. Miles doesn't count because he's dazed but Venom is within contesting range, barely, again much like when he picked up the core. So he wasn't able to convert it, which might be the death knell for the game. Peter Parker activated and did some taser webs on Doc Ock for one damage and a stun. And then, lacking anything better that he felt he could do, he picked him up with Webapult and chucked him over to where you can see him for an additional one damage for impacting with the statue. Sorry, I forgot to mention, before the taser webs and before the throw there was a basic strike, it did nothing. That was his other action. He has no power left to try and convert the portal. He's too far away from it anyway. Doc Ock moved from where he was, then did arm lasers on Gwen to try and take her out to not give her a turn. He almost managed it, he did 3 damage to her, all said and done. Did not shake his status, not that it particularly matters because he doesn't particularly care about power generation. So now it is over to Gwen, I think, yep, to end the turn for the web wires and then crossbones if he can do anything. So Gwen moved up, did a freestyle beatdown on Doc Ock, did 2 damage which was enough to daze him. She then interacted with the portal for 1 power and managed to convert it. So Crossbones moved and then he was just within 3 to do overpower which lets him move within 1 afterwards regardless of if it does damage. On Venom he actually did really well, he did 3 damage to him, although Venom is still fine, he's got 6 HP, 5 HP on his unhealthy side, his dazed side. So that's all he could do. Now when you're being placed within 1 of a target, actually, couldn't he feasibly have been placed on this side even though it makes no sense because he was over there? Like can he do that? Because then he could technically try and convert oh no he can't he doesn't have any power never mind it was interesting experiment though is that legal but yeah he has no power so he can't try and convert that so that is the end of battle round four so with the closing of battle round four the game is over with a web warriors victory they hold three out of the four portals for one victory point each the spider foes hold one for one and of course venom was able to pick up the kree power core after miles dropped it from being dazed for another two making the final score 17 to 5. So that was two new affiliations for August shown off on the channel, both of them very interesting, very different. There wasn't a chance to do well laid plans, which was the tactics card for the spider foes that would have made a character drop an objective. Green Goblin and Doc Ock needed to spend more time close together, and obviously it would have helped if they'd had Venom to help them out rather than him being a good guy for once. But yeah, very fun, very interesting. Uh, the Web Warriors affiliation bonus seems far more useful to me personally, that's that's my take on it. it. It helped a lot, especially with how much objective grabbing there was in this one. And the new mission for the spider portals that came in the Gwen and Miles box is a fun twist on the origin bomb type of mission. Anyway, I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching. Please do remember to show your support if you want to see more in the future. And until next time, it's for now.